four to eight should be included, and also the native species conservation should be there, and batch wise removal of the invasive alien species should be there. And I've also published this uh, chapter, book chapter, and book Lugin infrastructure across Asian Thank countries. You, uh, Thank you, Sir. Thank you. We got it. Your presentation. Yeah. Thank you. So we request to participants to stay in the time limit. That is very important. Yeah, he's ready. Maruk is ready. Yes. Yeah, Rishad, you may please start. Oh, sure. Thank you. Can you share my slides, please? Hello. Yes. Sir. Did you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Please share a slide. Can someone share my slides? They have to share. Rishad, you have to go to presentation. You have joined online, right? There is a way you have to present your slides from your screen. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, my uh, presentation goes for the cloud forest uh, projects in Bangladesh. We are... First, share your screen. Deepa, slide to share the slide? Yes, you share your screen first. Sorry, uh, I have some problem with my sharing screen. Can I present it later? Yeah, yeah, it is happening. Uh, no comment, sir. No, no, a... it is for all participants. Yes, please share. I can't able to share my screen at this moment. It's something happened. What you can do, you can send your slides to, uh, you can email or you can WhatsApp your slides to the concerned okay. person and you can speak about uh, your paper. Okay. Okay. Then I will do it later. Okay. Sure. Thanks. So next is Raki Tiagi. Raki Tiagi, please come on the stage. So then uh, Manish Kumar Vijay, abstract ID 14. A very good evening to all. Today I am here to present my talk on the topic Harnessing Science and Technology for Climate Resilient Tropical Forest Conservation. Basically, it is a part of All India Coordinated Research Project on City Technology, which is funded by the CAMPA under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. As per the recent estimate by the FAO, around 7.3 million hectares of forest land we are losing every year and the factor responsible for it is, it is majorly because of the agriculture. If we say the wild harvest plant trade at a glance, then we find that after the COVID-19 demand of medicinal aromatic plants continuously growing and it reached its peaks. If we see the wild harvest plant, majority of the MAPs are coming from the wild area, around 70 to 90 percent. So their population continuously declining and which is causing habitat loss or exploitation, invasive pest and disease as well as the climate change. 
so what is the solution how we can protect our forest area so solution two kind of solution one is the restoration of the means bringing back the forest area and another is the domestication means bringing these wild population in cultivation but both of these we require quality planting material as well cited in rigveda the subijan susatri jayate sampadet means a good seed in good soil yield abundant so we need to produce more and more quality planting material uh, not only for uh, fulfilling the demand of mapj but also the over target in bone convention in our national determined contribution target to uh, create an additional carbon sink of around 2.5 to 3 million met, um, billion ton of carbon dioxide by 2030 uh, but the problem is that there is a uh, shortage of quality seed and it is not a, only the indian problem it is the global problem and cited in the various literature and why it is there because we are not having quality control system or national seed system is totally fragmented if we compare forestry sector with the agriculture sector then in forestry sector there is no seed certification or seed testing agencies are there so quality of the seed we can't determine so we need to strengthen our seed and supply system so considering this our council under the minister of environment forest and climate change we have uh, working on the two very significant project one is the uh, seed technology and another one is the national program for conservation of forest genetic resources throughout uh, the india through nine uh, uh, centers so we are uh, uh, documenting the fgr resources throughout the central india we are uh, doing fgr collection followed by germplasm storage characterization and conservation presently we are working on the uh, 50 species mostly them of our rare in rare endangered and threatened in category uh, so we are uh, uh, working for conservation of these species we are carrying uh, on forest division by survey we are finding their location uh, understanding their phenology and uh, preparation uh, preparing their distribution maps and based on the, this data we are now moving in the direction of predictive provincing modeling so the, using the max and so that we can predict what will be happen in the future and where the habitat will be there we are developing their seed processing guidelines Uh, we are uh, storing the seed. A most significant achievement we have done in Central India that we have created a gene bank facilities for conservation of the valuable germplasm, uh, both at minus twenty degrees Celsius at long term and at mid term we have created facility of five to eight degrees Celsius. So orthodox kind of seed uh, which we can store, we have uh, stored in the gene bank and for recalcitrant seed we are storing in the field gene bank. we are developing their seed quality standard we are also uh, characterizing the different germplasm through the image analysis apart from this we are also developing seed quality enhancement protocols for these species to uh, to ensure their proper uh, germination in 30 seconds yes yes sir finally with, with the forest department we have uh, working on the, and providing the consultancy for the forest restoration through the uh, dono korean restoration so finally i can say we can, we are developing under this project three database we are developing maps as, as well as apps, apps for the uh, fast uh, supply of the information and we are developing guideline uh, so thank you all and uh, finally i would like to acknowledge campa ministry of forest and climate change dgicfre and director tfre uh, and of course the moves foundation for providing this opportunity thank you thank you manish so next is ms nilima raghubansi good evening everyone uh, due to time constraint i just uh, briefly summarize the work which i have done uh this is a small work which i did as part of my msc dissertation which was titled as understanding the scope of variation in tree canopies in improving the soil organic carbon in the aravalli forest in delhi so uh in this work basically i tried to study two types of canopies that is broadleaf canopy and pinnately compound leaf canopy the one the dense canopy and the other one the very thin and penetrating canopy so i have tried to study the influence these type of canopies have on soil and uh, uh, its physico chemical properties like soil organic carbon and uh, total nitrogen and moisture etc so uh, uh, i have basically tried to study the influence of canopy on the soil and these were the two objectives which uh, i uh, studied 
the study area was the Jawaharlal Nehru University forest area itself, which is a semi-arid open scrub forest. These are the images of the species which I studied, the acacia fistula being broadleaf species and prosopis and acacia being pinnately compound species. The, and uh, for methodology, I study, I studied various environmental parameters like canopy temperature, soil temperature. I did litter collection and its biomass analysis. And uh, also I did uh, soil sampling and laboratory analysis for soil organic carbon, pH, e electrical conductivity, total nitrogen and microbial biomass carbon and nitrogen. These are the results. I will just briefly summarize the results. Uh, uh, the broadleaf species, that is the acacia species, uh, it, it was found that the soil organic carbon was found positively correlated uh, with the moisture and the, both the soil organic carbon and moisture were found relatively compare, more uh, compared to for the broadleaf species that, that was Cassia fistula, indicating the significance of coming to the conclusion. The study signifies that uh, the broadleaf species uh, have higher uh, influences more uh, the soil qualities. So it has positive uh, more influence on the soil, enabling the more SOC that is soil organic carbon and total nitrogen. So this study, the main significance of this study was basically to help the forest department in providing the knowledge about what type, what focus they should put on, on during plantation, like broadly species, uh, their focus must be on the broadly species. So that, that will, uh, you know, enhance the overall forest quality and it will help the policy make, makers to make environment friendly policies so that the problem of wasteland which is basically in a Ravli forest can be, you know, solved and uh, the problem of hence the climate change can be solved. Uh, Neelima, so, I have a question for you. Yeah. So you are saying broadleaf species, broadleaf trees, they are adding carbon to the soil, right? They actually, con because of uh, the bro broadleaf species, basically they have more biomass. So yeah. they contribute more to the litter and thereby they influence, uh, you know, more positively to the soil physical chemical properties, thereby uh, improving that microclimatic condition of that particular broadleaf species. Okay, so what about the water consumption and what about evapotranspiration rates? Uh, surely I did not uh, look through it. So okay. Thank you. Thank you. Look it in the future. Thank you. Thank you. So but this was think end. about how it is support quantity of CO2 we are bringing to the soil. Yeah. If you bring more, then what will the impact on the soil? So you are concluding the soil results. So just see this relation. Idea. Definitely, I will look this yeah. into my PhD Please. work. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Yes, sir, sir. Please start. Oh, thanks. Thanks for giving the opportunity. I like to thank Movies Foundation and also ICC, ICC, ICC uh, coordinators for giving me the support. Actually, okay, okay, fine. Uh, the, actually, the project happened in Bangladesh. We uh, develop a crowd forest in, in a school where our, our uh, with some native plants, we Rishad, use... can you be please little louder? Sorry, uh, Rishad, yeah. Okay. Uh, the presentation, uh, the presentation, uh, the uh, this is action research for project was uh, set up by my uh, myself and our uh, group of people's plan for plant conservation and research foundation. We uh, the. A dream project uh, in in progress. Uh, this idea was generated when I was attending the ICC program in 2019 in Delhi. Uh, after that, uh, we developed some concept that is crowd forest in schools, and we uh, conducted this type of project in several secondary schools of Bangladesh. Our project is to engage the young people to to related about this. Uh, <clears throat> to make knowledge about it's a the move faster. Uh, it's a move faster. We have three minutes. Okay. So, uh, 
So, uh, our output that we have already cultivated to uh, crowd forest in Bangladesh with 40 uh, native peoples, native uh, tree plants, and we are hopefully Adishad, successful to Adishad, boost. Adishad, uh, can you go to the next slide? You have to uh, keep your cursors on the different slides which you have made. So only the first slide is visible. Okay, okay. There, is, uh, there may be yes, technical problem. Yes, yes, yes. So put your cursor on the second slide, which are showing at your left. Yeah. Yes. So please describe each slide very crisply. So once you talk about this slide, go to the third one and then speak. So uh, uh, this, uh, uh, yeah, the present slide is presenting the situation, present situation of Bangladesh uh, 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 that we are counting every, we are losing uh, forest uh, uh, 20, uh, we believe it is not 20% uh, of all population under endangered. Uh, and IUCN suggested that we lost 20% of the plant species within yes, 2050. Uh, 2050. Yes, Next. Um, and uh, our project goal is to the, uh, the reality is that we are losing uh, the size of area in, within this 2017 uh, in Bangladesh. And uh, our project is to connect the text to natures. So it will help the people to learn about the next please and learn about the uh, native forest. Uh, uh, our, our goal is to bring the children and adults closer to nature and uh, generate the conservation advocates through various activities while cultivating uh, our uh, nurtures. So this is the baseline of our uh, ob objective of our uh, status uh, projects. Next please. And uh, this is our project. We do, do establish conservation class, planting small scale forest. Next, uh, and also conduct baseline surveys, training the students for propagating materials on native trees. Uh, we also monitor the plant survival growth. And this is our activities where we collect the rare plant species from different locations. We also distributed some books and uh, uh, and also books some sapling to the student. And this is our conservation club acti activities. Next, please. Uh, our outcomes, the development is, uh, we develop some uh, small scale forest within the school yards and conserve some certain plant species, especially those are in natives. And people, uh, young people are now conducting these uh, um, serve, um, nursing these uh, plants and with the skills that each student will get connect to test to nature, critical thinking, ability, creativity, evangelization, communication, and collaboration, empathy to nature. It's just, just not about plantation. Approximately 30 times more trees are planted, and compared to conventional plantation, plant will grow three to four species per square meter, plant will 10 times higher than. Uh, higher and we this uh, we follow the Miyazaki forest model for this uh, plantation. Next, uh, next, we, we thanks to Montana University and U.S. Department and also Johiruddin Schools and uh, also our other participants. Those are help help us to develop this project and also I would like to thanks ICC, especially ICC and Mobius Foundation Climate project reality and also the participants from different uh, locations uh, to uh, uh, to hear this uh, message from from myself and my organization and we hope that we could do some positive works including that plans thanks thank you richard may may we know your organization's name the plan conservation and research foundation yeah, can you repeat? Plan Conservation and Research Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So Bye. the next uh, presenter is Namra, Miss Namra. Sorry, Mr. Namra.
गुड इवनिंग एवरीबडी माय सेल्फ नम्र वायडा अ सिविल इंजिनिअरिंग स्टुडंट फ्रॉम दी महाराजा सयाजीराव युनिव्हर्सिटी ऑफ वडोदरा सो आय एम प्रेझेंटिंग फॉर एज्युकेटिंग फॉर क्लायमेट ऍक्शन अँड सस्टेनेबिलिटी सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट एक्झॅक्टली इज क्लायमेट ऍक्शन ऑर क्लायमेट चेंज या लॉंग टर्म चेंजेस इन द टेम्परेचर ऍज वेल एज वेदर पॅटर्न्स आर रेफर्ड टू एज क्लायमेट चेंज सच फ्लक्च्युएशन्स मे ब्रॉट ऑन बाय सिग्निफिकंट वॉलकॅनिक इरप्शन्स ऑर व्हेरिएशन इन द सन्स ऍक्टिव्हिटी हॅव एव्हर सिन्स द लास्ट फ्यू सेंच्युरीज ह्युमन ऍक्टिव्हिटीज लाईक प्रायमरली बर्निंग ऑर कंबशन ऑफ द फॉजिल फ्युल्स लाईक कोल ऑइल अँड गॅस एक्सेट्रा हॅव बीन द रूट कॉज ऑफ क्लायमेट चेंज why is climate change education so important many of us might believe that rising temperature are the main effect of climate action but the story doesn't start only with the temperature increase changes in one place might have an impact on changes in all other areas since earth is a ecosystem in which everything is connected also the ability to recognize and address the effects of the climate catastrophe is made possible by education which also equips people with skills values information attributes necessary to engage them as agents of the change also people that are educated are more likely that they adopt new attitudes and behaviors as well as make decisions regarding the environment students can learn about effects of global warming and how to adapt change in the classroom all individuals are empowered by education but young people especially inspired to re- take relevant action thus the shift to a low, low carbon economy will be led by today's students moreover the upper secondary students will be the front liners of the climate change action now we will see how education sector can help in this so a transition to a sustainable economy can really be achieved through developing green skills to the students such as responsibly managing the environment use of more and more clean energy sustainable construction technology etc and this will be necessary for a su- successful green transition this transition to a sustainable future can be largely attributed to education climate literacy for advocacy as well as behavior change it is nothing but to openly promote the sustainable use of resources and for efforts to address climate change in local communities on the governmental levels sustainable development goal yeah the goal by united nations that is by 2030 all boys and girls will have had free elementary as well as secondary education thanks to this goal in order to achieve universal quality education it also seeks to provide access to affordable vocational training and eliminates wealth and gender inequalities the impact of education on tackling climate change is far far more if not then we are at the risk of failing to protect our future generations role of education the world must recognize education's vital role in preparing people for green economy and helping them adapt the face of climate shocks to unlock the system changes necessary for a more sustainable world our education urgently need to take more prominent role in the climate action these are some educational keys for climate change such as creation of schools that promotes environmental principles worldwide education that is universal education to hire the qualified specialist and a separate subject to be in the syllabus regarding the same you have 30 seconds yeah so a role of schools to maintain climate instead of putting protesting students outside of school they must give the students the environment they need to take immediate action on the climate then how women can make a move in climate change according to cai 2021 women are 14 times more likely to die in climate disaster than men however ed- educating these girls increases their chances of surviving and makes them more climate resilient and not only that by educating the following generation they will end the cycle of poverty and illiteracy so at last i would like to say that the future of our planet lies upon the next generation and they need to have access to quality education so let us educate them sensitize them regarding climate action and sustainability in difficult times of this environmental challenges thank you and uh, while making such comments like women are more vulnerable be cautious you may you know speak in some different terms 
uh, you can modify your pointer. Yeah. Just a suggestion. Thank okay, you. Okay, sure. Thank you. So next is Satabdi Das. She is ready online. Ready. Uh, good evening, sir. Please share your screen with presentation. Yeah. Is it visible, sir? Yes. Please make in presentation mode. Okay. Yes. Give me one second, sir. Hope it is visible, sir. Yes, sir. Please start. Uh, myself, Dr. Shatabdi Dash, Assistant Professor, Department of Political Science. South Calcutta Girls College. Uh, the name of my presentation is uh, Environmental Education and Sensitivity Towards Sustainability, a Pedagogical Reform Through National Education Policy, uh, NEP 2020. Uh, the next oh, the slide. First click on the screen, then you can move forward. Okay. Yeah, yeah. These are the research course uh, questions uh, um, as it has been shown uh, due to time constraint. I am not uh, reading it out uh, more or less uh, how environmental education helps in generating awareness among students for attaining SDGs and can it possible to transform the rhetoric of building environmental sensitization to reality through the reform of curricula by NEP and NEP uh, 2020 is the case in point. And uh, first, uh, that what is uh, environmental education? And uh, this is an environmentally literate person is someone who both uh, individually and together with others makes informed decisions concerning the environment, is trying to act on this decision to improve um, uh, the well-being of other individuals, societies, and participants in uh, civic life. Uh, then. Uh, these are the components of environmental education, like the eco-friendly behavior, the motivation towards the conservation of environment, developing environmental champions, and impart green consciousness for uh, green socially responsible actions. Um, these are the goals of environmental education. It has been uh, designed in uh, mainly uh, through the Johannesburg uh, 2002 uh, summit and 2012 video plus 20 summit these are uh, outlined there also uh, but uh, in general these goals are the awareness uh, to acquire an awareness uh, for and sensitivity to the total environment and its uh, allied problems and attitudes to help social groups and individuals to acquire a set of uh, values and feelings of concern for the environment and to help social groups and individuals to acquire skills uh, for identifying and solving environmental problems and uh, uh, above all the participation, which is very much important in this regard, because when we are talking about the- One minute is left. Oh, well, okay, I'm cutting it short. Uh, these are the uh, text through uh, the uh, sources of environmental education and NEP 2020, both uh, through school education and higher education institution that as NCERT designed the mission life uh, is very much pertinent in context to this uh, school um, education following the NAEP 2020 guidelines. And uh, the NAEP 2020 also uh, guiding um, uh, the curriculum the curriculum for the higher education institutions as well. And uh, NAEP is very much related uh, with the sustainable development goals as we know uh, youth can play an uh, important role in meeting the objectives of SDGs uh, by actively studying their environment. You are obtaining in-depth experience and please knowledge by your, using. Please conclude. Please conclude. Uh, uh, actually, environmental education is now being seen an instrument and a process that enables participation um, uh, and learning by people of all ages based on two-way communication rather than the old paradigm of a one-way flow of information uh, from teachers to people. Rather, the, it is a participatory uh, mode also. And uh, But through, um, uh, uh, the, though the 2020 talks about the access, affordability, equity, quality, accountability. Time is up. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. Then. 
So the next uh, speaker is Jinook. Jinook. Jinook is there? She's in person. She has to give. Okay. So we can. Jinook is not there. Yes, ma'am. I would be presenting online. Okay. 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 Shall I go ahead? Yeah. Please. Shall I go ahead, ma'am? Yes, yes, please. Continue. Sure. I hope my screen is visible to all. Yes, sir. Just make it the full screen, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Sure. You have four minutes. So yes. Try to uh, good evening, everyone. This is Jinuk Mitra from H2 Rain and Coastal Studies Foundation, Kolkata. And I'm going to present my talk on the early variation of mesozooplankton and the environment of an estuary of the Indian Sundarbans. Now, for anything to be sustainable, there has to be a conscious balance between our social and economic needs and the environmental resources that support it. In light of that, I will be talking about the estuaries, which are a transition zone between the marine and freshwater ecosystems and happen to be one of the most productive ecosystems of the world. They act as a natural cyclonic buffer and provide a range of ecosystem services and supports unique biodiversity. However, they are under a continuous threat by climate associated disturbances, changes in precipitation levels, cyclonic activities and various anthropogenic disturbances. In light of that, we'll be, I'll be talking about zooplankton. Now, zooplankton are aquatic microorganisms which are present in the water column, and they play a very crucial link in the food web sustainability because of their interconnection to the fishes via their trophic relations. Now, climate-associated changes or environmental disturbances are um, uh, reflected in these organisms at the species level, thus which makes them an important group for climate studies. The trophic relationship of the organisms. You may are... reduce your introduction and uh, go ahead with your observations and conclusion. Yes. Uh, our study deals with the mesozooplankton uh, specifically. Now, uh, for the study, we had selected the Thakuran estuary and we have conducted the study at two sites. S1, which is the head of the estuary, and S2, which is the mouth of the estuary and faces direct wave action from the Bay of Bengal. Study was conducted for a 12 hour period in December from 8 p.m. the previous day to 9 a.m. the next month. The method uh, observed is uh, shown here in this slide. Uh, the results show that the temperature remained more or less uniform at both the study sites throughout the study period. Salinity was maintained at a level of 13 at S2, while around 11.5 to 12 at S1. pH remained more or less similar at both the sites while total dissolved solids were higher but constant at S2 and showed minor variations at S1. Two clear tidal cycles of low tide and high tide were experienced by both the sites. Chlorophyll A concentrations rose uh, gradually along with the daylight hours, whereas for turbidity, we can see a spike between the hours 6 to 9 owing to a very large vessel traffic during, these, uh, during this particular time at the site S2. However, the nutrients showed non-uniform fluctuations throughout the study. Statistical analysis showed that these five parameters marked in red uh, significantly declined at S2, while chlorophyll A significantly increased at S2, while none of the parameters showed any significant differences in S1, thus establishing two clearly distinct microhabitats in the same estuary. So, uh, however, on the other hand, the zooplankton did not differ much in their total uh, numerical abundance at both sites, and such is corresponded by the various diversity indices studies which we conducted, which showed no significant early variation existing. So, in conclusion, we can see that the estuarine ecosystem possesses different microhabitats on the basis of the environmental heterogeneity present and which affects the zooplankton community directly. Now, if this community remains stable, that translates to the prey availability being sustained to the higher trophic levels, the trophic link to the fishes exists, and overall the ecosystem is supposed to be more resilient to the climate-induced disturbances faced by this ecosystem. On the other hand, if it is disrupted, then that could lead to a possible break in the energy transfer, endangering the food availability to the higher trophic levels, and it also risks endangering the endemic species 
which are found specifically in such estuaries and such niche habitats. So overall, I would like to conclude by saying that these estuarine ecosystems and um, zooplankton communities need to be the sustainable sustainable practices of these ecosystems are of primal impo importance. Okay, I would like to end by uh, thanking the foundation and ICSC for providing me the opportunity uh, to present my talk. And this is Jinook Mitra. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jinook. So next is again virtual, uh, Akshita and Sachin. Yes, sir. Yes, please start. Yeah, <clears throat> one second. Just introduce your, uh, don't introduce the introductory part. So no, no, no nothing. The methodology and conclusion. Yeah. Give me a second. Yeah. Uh, myself, Sachin, I'm assistant professor in uh, Surana College earlier in uh, St. Joseph's. I am co uh, presenting this with Akshata, who is assistant professor in uh, uh, Ramaya College. If you see the paper uses, how we use paper, our topic is assessment of optimizing the pages in answer booklet to minimize the carbon footprints in educational institutes. If you see how the papers are used in the world, we see that 417 million metric tons of paper is used every year, and India produces and uses 21 million tons of paper, which is 70,000 crore business. If you see most of it, 35% of the entire paper used is used for writing and printing, whereas 50% of it used for uh, uh, produced from wood-based paper, which means close to 15% of the entire paper produced is used for writing and wood based. Now, if you see major tree species that are used for paper manufacture, are eucalyptus, bamboo, and subabul. Generally, a six year old tree is cut, which is 300 kg, yields 57% of the pulp. If you take one big A0 sheet, you can have 16 A4 sheets, which is 70 GSM. Each paper weights 4.37 grams. And therefore, with one tree, you can have close to 39,000 sheets. We should also know one gram of paper produced produces one gram equivalent of carbon dioxide. We also should realize paper can be recycled only three to six times in its lifetime. The study was conducted in St. Joseph's College in Bangalore. This is the booklet, what we have done. We evaluated first, third, fifth semester uh, answer booklets. 263 subjects were taken, 28,680 answer scripts were uh, evaluated. Uh, the booklet has 16 pages or eight sheets. One sheet is used for writing the summary of the marks that they have got, which is a data entry sheet. We did not take any behavioral pattern of the students, whether they write big, small, leave the page, doesn't matter. Even if they have written one page or one line, we have considered it. The booklet has 28 lines to optimize the use of the booklet. And um, we see this pattern where Generally, we see that students have used close to seven sheets in average, okay? And it has gone up to 24. Then we had to analyze. Uh, fortunately, we had marks also recorded along with the number of sheets used. And we see that the unlikely that we have seen uh, mathematics uses close to eight sheets on an average compared to subjects, which we always think subject takes more paper compared to science, but it is a reverse in this case. Subject has taken less uh, number of papers. We have also recorded the number of additional sheets students have taken, if any. Then we also wanted to check whether students have a pattern perception where they think writing more gives them more marks. But this map shows or heat map shows that understanding was not true, which means they wanted to write more qualitatively to get more marks. Similarly, we did another analysis of correlation to uh, check whether this is true or not, except few uh, subjects, we found that they are highly correlated, which means uh, more precisely they write more marks they, have, they were getting throughout the analysis. The discussion, we found that after all these things, if university or the college had reduced 50% of the booklet pages, the college could have saved 50,000 sheets in one shot, in one semester exam, which would have amounted for one and a half lakh gram of carbon dioxide equivalent release. Now just imagine there are two semester, one lakh sheets are waste. There are two internals, one practical exam, mid semester exam, et cetera. You have one can, minute. Yeah, easily sum up to six and a half gram, six and a half lakh gram equivalent of carbon dioxide. 
Now, imagine Bangalore University, which has 4 lakh students, which can easily clock up to 50 lakh sheets per year only for one semester. Now it will become one crore if considered as two semester. Now you can understand the potential of this study. Three crore students do bachelors with 4.2 crores doing all over the higher education, plus two five crores and plus 10 standard or SSLC eight crores. Now you can analyze how many sheets are being wasted nationally just for not writing that. And we are not against using paper. We are against wasting paper. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Sachin, I have one comment that uh, you are showing one gram CO2 for one gram paper. Right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So we must best just check the reference. Okay, sir. So what are the uh, data you are using? Means the data set? Uh, it's uh, uh, Central okay. Paper Research Institute data, sir. I, I forgot, but yeah, that, that, that's there is the report. Just check again because I, I can't find that number in the uh, internet. Okay, sir, I'll send you. Okay, thank you. So next is, uh, thank you, Satin. So you yes. got all the details of all different examine, examinations. Uh, you know, I mean to say it is very difficult to get all the answer sheets from yes, different teachers and no, no. get with their marks. We had a central examination facility in the college where they dump all the answer sheet after the evaluation. We just went and requested our controller of examination. He provided all the answer sheets and we took and noted on all the uh, marks. So and how much time it took? Uh, it took 15 to 20 days of seven to eight students together. Work okay. hours wise. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So next is uh, Minal Arora. She's there. Online. Okay, okay. So some rest pal, right? Okay. Please connect. So Samresh Pal? Yes. Yeah, please start. You have four minutes to present. Yeah. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, I'm Samresh Pal from Department of Mathematics, University of Kalani, West Bengal. And the title of my topic is Effect of Rising Sea Surface Temperature on Coral Reef. We all know that corals are overgrown uh, by macroalgae. That is, macroalgae grow faster than corals. And uh, how to slide show. Yes. And uh, Macroalgae spread vegetatively over algal tufts at a rate A. And uh, we know that macroalgae moves from one patch to another patch. So the colonization rate of newly immigrated macroalgae on algal turf is B. And coral has natural mortality rate G. And we know that macroalgae, they release toxic chemicals and which is harmful uh, for the marine organisms. And the toxin induced death of corals because uh, uh, due to this interaction, coral population is reduced. And this is the uh, reduction. This is the rate that is gamma m over delta plus m per unit area of coral cover, where gamma is the maximal toxicity rate and delta is the macroalgal area at which the toxicity rate is half of gamma. And uh, herbivorous fish, they actually predate on this macroalgae. And so they are 
very much beneficial for the existence of coral population. And this G is the maximal grazing rate of herbivorous fish. And this omega, this represents coral area for the settlement for herbivores at which grazing rate is half maximal. And this is our simple model. Uh, this first one is the macroalgal uh, growth rate, DMDT, and second one is the coral population, and third one is the turf algae. Turf algae is the assemblage of microalgae over which macroalgae and coral, they grow. And fourth equation is for the effect of temperature. This is the uh, change of temperature, and this uh, this is the most important one in our modeling system. And we, we actually analyze the system with this condition. And here T A, T suffix A is the normal average sea surface temperature. And this beta, this represents the coefficient of surface heat transfer. And we know that corals growth, they depend on this sea surface. Seconds sea surface temperature. And this growth rate is given by this relation. And this T, this is actually, there are two threshold, uh, lower level, and this is the upper one. I'm directly going to the result. This is the recruitment rate of corals as a function of temperature. And here we have considered different temperature zone. One is temperate zone, another is tropical, and uh, another one is subtropical zone. And this is the bifurcation diagram with uh, the effect of toxicity and sea surface temperature. And from this, I'm just moving to the uh, observation. We, the macroalgal toxicity tolerance in corals increases due to increase of sea surface temperature up to a certain threshold. Your time is up. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Can you, thank you. Can you quickly conclude? Yes. Yes. This is uh, our observation is that the macroalgal toxicity tolerance in corals increases due to increase of sea surface temperature up to a certain threshold. And with high sea surface temperature, the toxicity tolerance in corals reduces drastically and followed by the mass mortality rate of corals. That is, we usually call uh, the coral bleaching. And second one, we identify the effect of grazing, grazing by herbivorous reef fish on macroalgae, on coral cover for different sea surface levels. Yes. Th uh, thank you, uh, Samresh Paul. Yes. Yeah, uh, I have one question that whatever uh, differential equation you have developed, so that was based on some reference? Yes, definitely. Okay, so initial condition were taken from there only? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So next is Renu Singh. Thank you, Samresh. We are going to next. Yeah, it is online. Renu Singh. Namaskar. Good evening. Can you can you hear me, please? Yeah, you are audible. Please share your screen. Yes. Slide up, 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 slide Okay, 
Let's make it the full screen, man. Yes, full screen. Good evening. My my topic is Renaissance evaluating the effectiveness only. So please present. Yes, yes, yes. I'll I'll try my best. Evaluating the effectiveness of the Indian Wildlife Protection Laws analysis of enforcement and prosecution efforts. And I'm basically doing my PhD from Amity University. Uh, effectively enforcing wildlife and forest offenses requires a well-functioning, efficient uh, prosecution service and an independent judiciary that is required. Judicial responses to wildlife trafficking can broadly be classified into three categories. Environmental matters, including wildlife trafficking, being handled by the prosecution and judicial authorities with general jurisdiction. And the second one is internal specialization of prosecution and judicial authorities, usually uh, staffed by prosecutors and judicial officers who have undergone specialized training and the establishment of the specialized environmental courts, body or individuals in the judicial branch of government and tribunals, non-judicial government dispute resolution bodies. Next, please. The study area was basically Uttar Pradesh, uh, India, from the reports with the Forest Department and, and E-Media from 2012 to 2021, 10 major districts were primarily focused, Pilibhit, Bahraich, Gonda, Sultanpur, Lakhimpur, Kiri, Balrampur, Barabanki, Maharajganj, and Amici. These were the areas which were studied. Next, please. Uh, to analysis the enforcement and judiciary effectiveness, what, what exactly happens? Wildlife offenses are... Uh, happen and then the arrest takes place. Drafting a report offender referred to the court. Uh, then proceedings uh, are undertaken. Public prosecutor classification without follow up. Uh, this can lead to release. Then investigation, examining uh, judge discharges referral for trial, and uh, decision is tribunal regional court conviction decision. This can also lead to result. The method was utilized involves review and critical analysis of both secondary sources of data collected through the service by way, ways of visits to different forest offices, documentation centers and websites of the national organizations working in wildlife law and policies and conservation in particular. Uh, wildlife crime is a major concern in North India, particularly in the state of Uttar Pradesh. According to a report by NCR Bureau, UP accounted for over 25% of the country's wildlife crime cases since 2016. In 2016 alone, out of 859 cases registered under the Wildlife Protection Act uh, in the country, 302 cases were registered in UP. So these are the places, these are the, uh, the crime hotspots. Hot uh, the, the main districts are Pilibhit, Lakhimpur, Khiri, Bahraich, Balrampur, where mostly it is the turtles, pangolins, leopard skins, and the uh, and, and the skin of the deer are uh, the, the crime related to them happens. Next, please. This is what uh, I wanted to say that out of these uh, uh, 746 cases registered in the Uttar Pradesh under the Wildlife Protection Act in 2002 to 2016, the maximum cases 223 were, were registered in Pilibit, followed by Lakhimpur Khiri. In January uh, 11, 2017, the STF, that is Special Task Force of Uttar Pradesh Police, seized over 6,000 endangered soft shell and flap shell turtles, weighing over four tons from a house in Amethi district in a largest wildlife hall. Next, please. Mostly, I'm talking about compounding cases. The, there, are, there are many cases which are pending in the court and the cases which are pending in the department. This also leads to a problem. Now the confiscation level by forest department, um, and it is the, the turtle, basically it's, it's a case study. Chain of custody demonstrates illegal trade at different levels of trading at the international level. Uh, soft shell uh, turtles, Indian flap shell turtles, primary level traders, secondary level traders, tertiary level traders, and then it is the quaternary level traders. Uh, basically it's, it's about Amethi and Sultanpur. The main community who really deals with it are Kanjar community, and then it goes to shopkeepers. From shopkeepers goes to local consumers, traders. And then the traders in the different countries. Uh, they, it goes to China, Indonesia, and Gulf countries also. Next, please. This is about 2017 and 20. Can you hear me, please? Am I audible? Yes, yes. Please continue. 
your time is already up please conclude fast can you hear me please i said your time is up please conclude okay okay uh this is regarding this is regarding uh how exactly uh, the trade takes place it it goes to bahrain it is a district it goes to bahrain from bahrain goes to nepal and then it goes to uh, gulf countries also next please these are the certain steps in wildlife uh, uh, this thing they are power to to search and uh, the the premises which is in section 50 of wildlife protection act the power to stop detain or arrest any person without a warrant is in section 50 wildlife protection act recording the statement of the witness is there then there is a bail or conditional grant of bail is there uh, examination of the author authorized persons presenting the complaint to be dispensed with section 200 crpc issuance of warrant summons by magistrate generally the chief judicial magistrate he uh, handles these cases recording of the pre charge evidences accused to state whether he pleads guilty or not and then accused to enter upon his defense and produce his evidence examination of the accused by the court judgment acquittal or conviction of the accused yes now the approaches for the better law please conclude fast yes i am in concluding it is this is just the last slide please uh, strengthening legislation improvement law enforcement listing species establishing hotspot zone increase severity of the penalty and the barriers which really uh, which happens is conflict in responsibility social norms difficulty in law enforcement and inconsistent rules uh next is i'd like to uh, to thank uttar pradesh uh, forest department who has provided the data and faculties of the amity institute of forestry and wildlife thank you thank you renison welcome thank you thank you sir thank you sir uh we congratulate all the participants it was very enriching experience for all of us and many many uh, audiences were sitting there and even i can see very keen audiences so without taking much time uh, uh we just thank you all for taking participation so enthusiastically and audiences were very keen uh in in the participation thanks a lot yeah, of course uh, there were various subjects on which the presentation presentation were made and i think for the judges it was also difficult to to see evaluate it on the basis of the fact that you see it was quite different the subjects were quite different and also the methodology used was quite different but anyway uh, i think they have uh, done it and i congratulate the presenters that they <clears throat> had enough i think enthusiasm to present all this you see to give their presentations very well So th this is just a beginning, and I think in future they can improve it further. In some cases, you see the presentations were written in very small letters, so they should in fact take into account that uh, everyone is able to read it in a PPT. That is very very important. That is the suggestion I want to give. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank
Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you uh, to all the participants. And of course, all this is given this uh, with various uh, different fields. So uh, someone from the presented from the mathematics background something differential equation, and they were trying to optimize the uh, conditions. They have assumption from, from uh, initial condition, and how can we optimize to survival the more rates at uh, less area something. So I think it was also I am from mathematics background. When I came to environment, oh, what will do? <laughs> So, uh, in have environment there. I they were thinking. But... <laughs> yeah, so, so ultimately, I work on software, then I yeah, so conclude my PhD in environment. And I'm from environmental science, so we, we <laughs> are making a good combination. Okay, thank you. And it was very difficult to assess the, all the presentation. There are different you know, backgrounds because people are, someone from uh, assistant professor say something. Some are from the students, some from someone from MSc, MSc uh, postgraduate, PhD. So of course we have to evaluate over all the things. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, so very challenging. Yes. Meanwhile, we will conclude that. So how many ranking we provide? Three. I have concluded this. Four seconds. I have given my own. No problem. No. What we can we can conclude? We can jointly we can conclude. Yeah. That will be better. We yeah. I think we can give to mom and you can announce can accordingly. Can do it together. Then we can join. Okay. okay. Then we should take the. Yeah, yeah, they will go out the yeah. building. Yeah. Achha. Yeah. Okay. We'll do after this. Okay. This is Chandan Das or this? Uh, I have given this marks to this mm -hmm. person. Jinnu can actually answer to answer to okay. Uh, who was a first paper writer? Mm -hmm. um, uh, हाँ ये इन्होंने लास्ट में हाँ चंदन दास वो वो थर्ड आ रहा है मेरे उसमें ठीक है सर आपके तो नहीं बता रहा था लेकिन नहीं मेरा मैं बहुत ही कम लेंगे इसमें तो हाँ वो तो फर्स्ट हो जाएगा